In this lesson, we're going to look at what is an exponential function. So just the very basics, getting used to the idea of what an exponential function is. There are some ideas to keep in mind. First of all, what is an exponential function? Well, very simply, it's just a function that has a variable as an exponent. You see exponential functions actually used a lot in finance when we calculate compound interest. That's an exponential function. In health issues, when we look at how quickly drugs are eliminated from your body, that's exponential. And there's a lot of other real-life applications. Now you might hear terms like exponential growth and exponential decay. Well, exponential growth means that the rate of growth is continually increasing. And so here's a little graph to illustrate. I've got two different exponential functions on there. And both of them, you can see they start out growing fairly slowly, but the rate of growth starts picking up, and eventually the rate of growth is pretty quick. The other thing that you hear is exponential decay, and you can kind of think of that as the opposite of exponential growth. So in exponential decay, we're going down, we're decaying, we're losing stuff. And at the beginning, we decay very quickly, but gradually that rate of decay sort of starts tapering off, and we're only decaying a little bit. So what is an exponential function? Well, here is the mathematical, formal, technical definition. f of x is equal to a of x. a and x must be real numbers. a must be greater than 0, and a cannot equal 1. Well, why? Well, let's see what happens when we break those rules. Well, first of all, why are we saying that a can't equal 1? I mean, 1 is a perfectly respectable number. Well, if we substitute a 1 in there for a, what happens? 1 to any power is just 1, and f of x is equal to 1 is just a constant function. There's no growth there at all. So we can't break that rule and expect to get anything very interesting. What happens if a actually ends up being less than 0? Well, we could get something like this. f of x is equal to a negative 4 to the 1 half power. And if you remember, rational exponents are really roots in disguise. Negative 4 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of negative 4. And remember, the square root of negative 4 is an imaginary number, so it's not a real number. So. We can't break that rule because if we do, we might get ourselves into trouble. So let's look at the penny riddle. So think about this. If I offered you a choice, I'm either going to give you $1 million on the first day of a month or one penny the first day, two pennies the next day, four pennies the following day, and so on. So every day I'm going to double the number of pennies that I give you. Which would you take? Well, if you chose getting the pennies doubled every day, then you're in luck. This is actually the exponential function. f of x is equal to 2 to the x power. And let's look it through just so you can see how it works. On day 1, I would give you 1 penny. And that happens to be 2 to the 0. The next day, I would give you two pennies, and that happens to be two to the first power. Third day, I give you four pennies, two squared. Next day, I give you two to the third, and so on. By the 31st day, I'm giving you two to the 30th pennies. That is a heck of a lot of pennies. At the end, if you add up all those pennies, the total pennies that you're going to get in the end, that's over 2 billion pennies. Every time we increase the exponent by 1, our result 
increases by a factor of 2. So 2 is what we call our growth factor. So how many dollars is that, by the way? See if you can figure that out. There's another place where you wouldn't expect it, but number places are actually an exponential function, powers of 10. So the 1's place is 10 to the 0. The 10's place is 10 to the 1st. The 100's place is 10 squared, and so on. So in this case, each time the exponent increases by 1, the result increases by a factor of 10. So our growth factor here is 10. Let's look at bacterial growth. So let's say that there's a certain strain of bacteria growing on your kitchen counter and it doubles every five minutes. This function that you see there, g of t, is the function that gives us the number of bacteria that is present after t minutes. So let's just take an example. Suppose there's just one lonely little bacterium sitting on your counter that you missed when you were cleaning. How many of those bacteria could be present at the end of 96 minutes, given the growth rate? Well, again, g of t gives you the growth rate for this particular bacteria. It's an exponential function. To figure out how many we have after 96 minutes, we're going to plug in 96 for t. Try this on your calculator. 602,248 and then some bacteria. So in 96 minutes, you'll have 602,000 and about 249 bacteria sitting on your kitchen counter. Here's another example of population growth, this time people. So in Albuquerque, according to the experts, Albuquerque is increasing steadily in population between 1 to 2 percent a year. So let's just call it 1.5 percent. So starting with 2010, the year 2010 is our base, when there was a census, we had 546,537 people in Albuquerque. So we create an exponential function to model this, and you can see p of t. So what we want to know is, what is the population going to be 10 years after this 2010 census, so 2020? So we plug in our numbers. We're looking at 10 years into the future, or 10 years since 2010, and it looks like the population is going to be 634,279. Well, get back to me in the year 2020 and let's see how close this is. Here's another example of exponential growth. In this case, the number of cell phones. Year one was 1986. You can see that uh, cell phones didn't catch on very quickly for a few years, but then all of a sudden around year five, year six, a lot of people started buying cell phones and cell phone growth just exploded. Now here's one example of exponential decay, one that we all hate. When you go buy a new car, and let's say we buy a car valued at $25,000, we know the minute we drive it off the lot, it's going to lose a lot of its value. And so this particular function supposes that you're going to lose 15% of the value of your car every year. So this is an exponential function. Each year, the value of the car is 85% of what it was in the previous year. So that's the big ideas about exponential functions and some examples of how we use them. So recall, we said an exponential function is any function that has a variable as an exponent. We do use exponential functions for quite a few different things. We can talk about exponential growth, and we can talk about exponential decay.